Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, I haven't posted like a legit good video on here in a little while. So I just thought I'd make a quick little video. I just wanted to give like an update on my equipment stuff because, you know, we're trumpet players. We like to talk about equipment a lot. So uh, I'm still sticking with this the horn that I got at ITG. Still loving it. It's awesome. This is the Austin Custom Brass 2RL professional model and scent lacquer. I love the horn. No complaints about it. It's doing awesome. This is just a Protec uh, valve block guard, whatever you call them, just to protect the valves a little bit. Um, I now have a Lafrique on the horn. Uh, this is the this is the student one, the practice one. My band director at my school got us some. Um, I like it. The one thing I will say about it is, it's something you don't feel. Like you don't feel it in your playing, but I definitely do hear it. Uh, it gives just a little bit more body on the sound. It's meant to bridge the sound between two parts of the instrument that are not built together. So now to the interesting part that everyone wants to know about, uh, my mouthpieces. This mouthpiece I haven't officially revealed on my channel. This is a Warburton, it's a custom mouthpiece. Uh, it just says FP on it. Uh, I don't know what that stands for. And it's a five star backboard. This mouthpiece was uh, given to a good friend, a monster lead trumpet player, uh, Danny Carrion, just graduated from school, and Kenny Rampton. Kenny Rampton from Chesa Lincoln Center gave him this mouthpiece, and then he gave it to me. So this mouthpiece is what I primarily play, well, I play all of my lead work on it for big band, for salsa, all of that stuff. But as I've gotten used to it, uh, I've found that it's really good for everything that I do. I've played in multiple combos, and small groups with this mouthpiece. Uh, it's pretty small. What fools you is it looks bigger than it is, you know, like it looks like it's a decent size there, but you, you put your finger in it and it's like, it's a pretty small mouthpiece, but it does the job, you know, it does all the different kinds of things that I wanted to. So here's a little go of this mouthpiece. mouthpiece i like it a lot um yeah uh the next mouthpiece i'll go over the two lotus mouthpieces that i have um this is the let's see which one is this this is the 2m plus so this was adam rappa's personal mouthpiece when i went to itg uh they settled on two mouthpieces that i love and i one of them was a 2m plus and when they want to give me the horn the only mouthpiece available to uh like available for me was I well, Adam offered, he was like, uh, hey, hey, this is my mouthpiece, but it's a 2M Plus, so it's one of the ones you're getting. And then he ended up giving me his personal mouthpiece. So this was Adam Rapper's mouthpiece. And this mouthpiece I primarily use if I don't, if I'm, if I have the option to pick which mouthpiece I'm going to play on, I'll use this for small group and combo work. Uh, it's about a one, I think a one and a half rim or one and a quarter rim. And it's just, it's basically a C cup, a tiny bit smaller than a box C cup. Um, but yeah, it gives just a nice dark sound. You can play bop on it. Um, what I like about the Lotus mouthpieces is that you can still take them up there. You know, of course, it's not the same uh, tone or color, but it's still accessible. You know, you can play stuff like. Oh, <laughs> 
you know, it's they're very versatile mouthpieces. So yeah, I'm happy with it. The next Lotus mouthpiece is the 3S Plus, which this mouthpiece is a Bach 3 rim, so just a tiny bit smaller, and about an E cup. Now this mouthpiece, I used to play all of my lead work on uh, until I moved on to that Warburton. And now, even though lately I've only been using the Warburton, I still go back and forth on these mouthpieces when I'm at home and stuff, because I still really love this mouthpiece for a few months, for a good, let's say three, three, four months, I played all of my lead on, on this mouthpiece. It's pretty awesome. I still like playing on it. It feels great. Sounds great. Looks dope in the horn. You know, I got the, the, the satin finish and these Lotus mouthpieces are in that same kind of feel. So it looks dope. Here's a quick sample of this. Oh, real quick, one of the other things I love about this mouthpiece is it's a relatively small mouthpiece. If people would see it and say, that's a pretty small mouthpiece, but it gives a thick bodied sound. You know, it's, it's a pretty versatile mouthpiece. Here's a, uh, I'll close my eyes. show you a little bit of lead stuff because this is what I use for playing lead. Still one of my favorite mouthpieces. I love both of my Lotus mouthpieces. Uh, on to the next one. This mouthpiece I have showed you before. This is the Monet B2 LS3. Um, it's about a, a buck one and a half, one and a quarter, I forget. And it's just a tiny bit smaller than a C cup. And this is what I use for classical work. This is like I'm playing in a trumpet quartet right now. And this is my go-to mouthpiece for that. Just gives a little bit more core and uh, roundness to the sound, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm happy with it. I can play all over, all registers with it. And it gets a little frisky in the upper register just because of it's on the bigger side of mouthpieces. But uh, right, at least for me, you know, I play on relatively small mouthpieces. Um, it's it's pretty dope. I like it a lot. Here's some stuff for you. state of playing right now i wasn't doing any serious playing but uh just want to give you a quick demo of these mouthpieces so yeah that's the that's the monet it's pretty cool classical mouthpiece um this mouthpiece i don't have too much experience on yet uh this is not my mouthpiece this is just a borrowed mouthpiece and i'm still messing around with it but it's pretty cool uh it's a dennis wick 4e 
what I like about this mouthpiece is that it's for me, this is one of my the biggest mouthpieces I have. It has a pretty big cup, but uh it has sizzle to it, you know, which is rare for me to find. You know, there's a lot of players that can do it, they play in bigger mouthpieces and get some brilliance and brightness and sizzle. But for me, that's that's never been my thing. But this mouthpiece kind of does that, you know. And with the a little bit of a bigger cup, I can still play uh some like a big sound stuff you know you can trick trick people into playing trick people into thinking you're playing on a real mouthpiece you know so here's a little bit on the dennis wick 4e yeah <laughs> register something new and then my last mouthpiece which is my newest mouthpiece is uh a legends brass mf master so this is based on old maynard ferguson mouthpiece as the shallow convex v cup mouth uh kind of thing going on if you can see that there it's it's pretty dope uh it's weird for me i'm not gonna lie it takes some crazy adjusting to play on something a convex v cup as opposed to all of my mouthpieces that are bowl cups or drop fees and stuff like that. Drop fee just means that if this is the side of the rim, you have a little drop. So it fools you into thinking it's a uh, bowl cup mouthpiece and then it goes into the V kind of thing. But this mouthpiece is a convex V cup, slightly convex. So if this is the rim, instead of doing one of those, it just goes into the throat. Uh, so I'm still messing around with the mouthpiece. I, this is a heavy blank mouthpiece. It's uh, got a lot of mass on it. And because of that, I think that's what, it doesn't have as much brilliance or uh, ring to it as my, like my Warburton mouthpiece that I play lead on. It's still, of course you can go up there. I mean, it's a Maynard Ferguson mouthpiece, but it's just a different feel, it's a different kind of approach to it. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I think the extra mass on it doesn't give it the zing like the Warburton does. But here's, it has a huge throat, so it's easy to play in all registers. It's a 19 throat, so. But uh, here's a little bit on the JT. And uh, now this is just a Legends Brass MF Master. <laughs> now and then but uh yeah just a few more notes and that's probably the most sizzling you get out of this mouthpiece at least that high you know you can still play a's right above the staff good Still, oh yeah. 
the hidden just the mouthpiece it's a pretty cool mouthpiece um i haven't been playing on it too much i, don't, I, don't, I haven't been taking too much time to really get adjusted to it just because like i've i heard a rumor that maynard ferguson himself took six weeks to adjust to his first v-cup mouthpiece and i don't really have that time playing with all the bands that i play with playing lead in big bands playing for salsa band uh just playing in a few different groups class or trumpet all that stuff uh so i'm looking forward to over the summer when i can really put some time into getting adjusted this mouthpiece because i think that once i really unlock it this mouthpiece it can do some crazy stuff you know so yeah that was just i wanted to put together a quick little video my rundown of my equipment this doesn't really count as equipment but i have my little cross on my trumpet uh inspired by one of my heroes out of Duca Sandoval. But yeah, I like the aesthetic. And it just lets people know what I represent, you know. I play I play my horn for God. Um, and that should be the first thing audiences see or hear that it's not for me, but for him, you know. So yeah, that's my quick little video on uh equipment. If you have any questions, wanna know something specific about one of my mouthpieces or ask about my horn or any of that stuff just drop a comment and down below you know how was respond stuff like that make sure to leave a like subscribe share this with all your people yeah take care y'all god bless